So I am a huge believer that if you have your eyes set on a watch, that you should not settle. You should hold out for as long as you possibly can so that you can responsibly buy that watch that you have your eyes set on. With the Patek Philippe Nautilus though, it's not that simple, and I think we probably know why if you are familiar with watches to any degree. For one, when this watch was in production, it was difficult to get to say the least, and now with the recent news of it becoming discontinued, it creates even more hurdles to get this watch. But with that being said, and with this news coming out, I thought it would be a good time to look at some other alternatives to the Patek 5711. So just to provide some ground rules, all the watches that we're gonna be looking at are going to be hitting different price ranges to helpfully assist somebody and maybe wanting to go for a watch of this style at different price ranges, depending on where they're at in their journey of collecting watches. In addition, they're not gonna be direct carbon copies of the Nautilus. If you want just a straight uh, knockoff and things of that sort, uh, this is not gonna be the video for you. And then in addition to that, they're gonna mostly follow that integrated bracelet style. And as I mentioned, aren't going to be direct copies and they don't always necessarily have this integrated bracelet. But I think when looking at these watches on the surface, you'll understand why maybe it was mentioned in this list. Now, before we jump into this video, I want to call out some awesome new releases on teddybaldasar.com. Uh, first off being the Marathon Arctic, 41 millimeters. So the release of the Arctic 36 millimeters as a great small dive watch, I think made a huge splash and many people liked the watch uh, when presenting it in videos in the past. And I'm a huge fan of Marathon as a brand as I've kind of now leaned a bit more into the tool watch style and military watch style of things in terms of my interest. So seeing it 41 will offer a ton of wearability options for people out there because candidly, the 36 millimeter was quite small even for myself. Also want to mention the Oris Aquas Whale Shark Limited Edition, a GMT watch from the Aquas family, which there certainly are a lot of those, but this one has a very interesting textured dial surface that also will have proceeds going towards great causes in the preservation of the whale shark, which is now on the endangered species list. And then also a new release, the Tissot PRX, which is also the first watch that we're gonna be looking at here today. Now this watch has been getting quite a bit of buzz as of late, the new Tissot PRX. And Tissot as a brand overall, they just often manage to combine visual designs that look more expensive than they are with Swiss movements at prices that are in cases like this, downright surprising. So for those not familiar, this watch is actually coming from a C-Star model in terms of the inspiration uh, from a few decades ago with also, of course, embedding a lot of these integrated bracelet style that was made popular by, of course, the Patek Philippe Nautilus at its release in 1976. And when looking at the case here though, probably being best and closely associated with the a Vacheron Constantin a 222 model with just its overall case dimensions and architecture. Now adding to that vintage feel here, we have a 40 millimeter case and a 44.6 millimeter lug to lug measurement. Though I do wanna stress that that figure can be a bit misleading given the end links do stick out a bit more from the case curving down slightly to form to the wrist pretty appropriately, but is going to be larger than what that lug to lug is going to really specify there. However, what really works in this watch's favor is the level of finishing on this piece being really strong for the money with alternate brushing and polishing on the surfaces throughout the case and the bracelet, as well as a well-executed dial and handset that are both done in a charming and legible way. It all comes together well to create a great entry door to this world of integrated style bracelets at a price at just $375. And integrated bracelets and price tags like this are typically a disaster considering that bracelets are the area where manufacturers tend to cut a bit more corners with their bracelets in order just to keep the prices down in this range. And I think it goes without being said, this approach when dealing with an integrated bracelet creates increased challenges given the exclusive way the bracelet is going to meet the case. But in this instance with the T-Soap, the concerns are not there. And I think that will be well apparent when looking at some of the close-ups of the bracelet finishing as well as the case. And sure, some seamless micro adjustment would be nice, but all in all, the PRX is certainly a hit for T-Soap. And there's already a lot of rumblings and demand for that automatic option. Now from going from a well-established, very popular brand in Tissot, moving into more of the independent boutique style brand with Formex, Swiss-based brand founded back in 1999, and we're gonna be looking at their Formex Essence, a watch that was recently downsized from 43 millimeters to 39 millimeters as an additional option, but these two styles of cases and the finishing with the bracelet and everything involved 
is very good for the money. Also with the release of the new 39 millimeter variant from Formax, also saw the introduction of a new green dial variant while offering a new logo in the process, which I know was polarizing for some enthusiasts on some of the brand's older models. While the Essence doesn't have a true integrated bracelet style, the connection between the case and the bracelet is still pretty seamless. And in a common theme that you'll see with this entire video is the finishing on this piece is superb for the money. The bracelet offers links that are screwed in and will come with a plethora of them in order to size precisely. And given that they are a bit smaller than the typical links that you will see, it will lend to a more precise fit that comes with more half link adjustment in the bracelet. The bracelet links are also all polished along the edge to elevate the look while featuring a patented extension system in the clasp. For those familiar with Formax, know the brand is all about packing some advanced tech in their watches with another notable feature being their case suspension system within the Essence and of course the typical cost certified calibers housed within. These developments begin to make a ton more sense when considering their CEO, Rafael Granito and his family have a long track record of doing advanced OEM work with their family owned company, a Swiss manufacturer specializing in the production of watch cases, bracelets, and clasps. And having over 30 years of family experience in that arena really is on full display with the essence here. Now going from Formax, moving over to Maurice Lacroix, and looking at their Icon series. And very similar to the Essence, the Icon now has really become that flagship model for the brand, which is commonly associated with their design style. And of course, this watch is not going to be maybe the most, uh, of course, unique design style. It is probably catering a bit more to the Royal Oak than it is the Nautilus. But in terms of what is being packaged here, you definitely can see why there's a ton of intrigue with this model and this line. The Icon Automatic is a great example of Maurice Lacroix's high level of finishing that they're gonna have for the price, especially with the Claude Perry style texture on the dial, a really impressive bracelet. And the other great benefit of the Maurice Lacroix Icon series is it does have a few different case options to choose from, most notably the original 42 millimeter option and then transitioning to a 39 millimeter option for those with smaller wrists. And I've done some more extensive reviews in the past on that and kind of looking at which one would be best. Uh, so I can leave those in the description down below if you are interested. And the Icon does run off a traditional SW200 with some little bit of up finishing custom rotor, which will offer some nice reliability and ease of regulation if you do end up with this watch. So when one thinks of Tudor, of course, I think many people are commonly associating the brand and they're just resurgence in terms of popularity of the mass market with the Tudor Black Bay. But today we're gonna to be looking at a different watch that probably isn't appreciated as much and is a fairly newer watch in regards to being pushed out for the brand. And that is the Tudor Royal. Now, despite their mass market appeal, there is still a needed reminder at times that Tudor also produces other models outside of their heritage inspired divers. The Royal manages to offer quite a bit of punch in the area of value since the price point is much more palatable thanks to the Salita based caliber within as opposed to their in-house calibers in some of their more expensive models, including the Black Bay family. Available in several styles, the Royal is an interesting retro feeling option for the dressier end of the integrated bracelet sport watch category. It has an engine turn bezel that's also going to have some fluted reflective elements, which will create a bit of flash in a very tasteful manner. In the 38 millimeter variant we have here, the Royal wears really well on a wide variety of wrists and sizes while giving off more of an elevated luxurious feel thanks to the applied Roman numeral hour markers on the dial and the polished elements throughout the case in the bracelet. This watch in many ways offers much of the same charm and case bracelet style of the legendary oyster quartz. Just kind of the thing that comes to mind when looking at this piece is it exudes pretty strong 1980s vibes, which might not be for everyone. However, considering the brand shop that you're going to be getting from Tudor in a package for around 2K, this is a nice watch for the money if this design style does speak to you. So when one thinks of Zenith, I think many will often attribute the El Primero, the Chronomasters as being the probably the epitome of the brand in regards to design as well as their manufacturing shops. But the DeFi Classic is probably one of my favorite watches that the brand makes. And in the realm of just everyday style watches in general is probably one of the most overlooked luxury sports watches that you can find. And though often overshadowed by the El Primero, Zenith's DeFi collection of sports watches dates all the way back to 1967, and especially in recent times has become the collection for the brand that exhibits their use of cutting edge tech and being a line of futuristic expression for Zenith instead of the reverence displayed to their storied history 
on display within many of their Chronomasters. Now, the D5 Classic is a modern sport watch with a tech forward design concept that would top a lot of lists if I think just more people were aware of it and gave it more than just a passing glance. With a lightweight titanium case, beautiful finish in house elite caliber with bi directional date setting and an open work skeletonized movement, solid water resistance, and an excellent set of dimensions that wears smaller than the proposed 41 millimeters with the help of a compact lug to lug, as well as the weight on that titanium case. The D5 Classic, simply put, is one of the most overlooked everyday watches in the price range in which it occupies. And while the bracelet and strap system is not as seamless as others on this list, the bracelet finishing is superbly executed and uniform. And a watch like the D5 Classic really makes me wonder why there aren't more enthusiasts that will go this route instead of sitting on a wait list for something like a new Oyster Perpetual, for example. And now to conclude our list and looking at a watch that certainly can punch in the same regard as the Patek Philippe Nautilus from a finishing standpoint, with the Vacheron Constantin Overseas 4500V. Now, even prior to the 5711 becoming discontinued, I was a huge proponent of the Overseas collection of offering a world-class finished sports watch with, I'd say, less pretentious undertones and a package typically associated with watches of this tier and style. In terms of heritage, the Overseas can have its roots traced back to the reference 222, unveiled in 1977, an integrated sports watch design made to honor 222 years of the manufacturer. And while it's not expressly a Gerald Genta design like the Patek Philippe Nautilus and the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, you can definitely see how the Overseas was conceived as Vacheron's take on this integrated sports watch design that was taking off in the 1970s. It wasn't until 1996 when Vacheron adopted the now long-standing collection of the Overseas, a collection that now has endured three design iterations, and in my humble opinion, the release of the Generation 3 design of the Overseas being the best yet. Now, the reference 4500V Overseas features a truly exquisite level of finishing of its case, with the clever use of the Maltese cross being embedded within the bezel and the bracelet, with each link hand polished on the edge, as well as the internal points where the links actually attach to one another, entering a territory of bracelet that is rarely rivaled, while also offering one of the best bracelet strap swapping systems on the market that is seamless and tool free. And inside the in-house Geneva Seal 5100 caliber, a great example of real high watch making being decorated with a Cote de Genève finish across the bridges with anglage making its present known when examining under the light and coming alive in the process. And at the center and winding the watch, a 22 karat gold rotor with an emblematic design at the center referencing the wind rose, a fitting theme of travel that is obviously portrayed by the overseas name. And then to add on top a 150 meter capable water resistance rating with a fairly restrained dial with striking reflective finish. But I think why the Vacheron Constantin Overseas makes a ton of sense is the fact that they do retail for just over $20,000. And I'm sorry to say just, but we are talking about the Nautilus here as a point of comparison and $20,000 for a Nautilus would be a steal but also the fact that when looking at the variety of different options you have at your disposal with the precious metal options, you could even get those for cheaper than the Patek Philippe Nautilus pre-owned prices. So with all of that considered, I think the Vacheron Constantin Overseas is certainly one of the best options to go for and is only probably gonna continue to go up in terms of its uh, value and reception in the marketplace as a result of the 5711 going out. But all right, guys, I'd love to see comments down below. Which one of these would you go for other than the Nautilus, of course? Uh, leave comments, love to see it down there. Also, if you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That's a great way to help out the channel. Don't just say that, it really does help out. Also, teddybaldasar.com. Check out those new releases as mentioned at the beginning, including that Marathon Arctic edition. Also looking at the Oris Whale Shark, and of course the Petiso PRX, the first watch mentioned on our list. TeddyBaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, full factory warranty for all of those products as well. So if something goes wrong, you're not having to pay the bill for it and they can get kind of expensive as you start to go up market for your watches. Also, we offer price match. So if one of our watches is seen at another authorized dealer for cheaper, let us know, fill out the form on the product page and then we'll reach out to you. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate from our store is right back in the content that we're creating here, trying to foster a new generation of watch enthusiasts. But also if you just wanna stay up to date with the content, couple other great places to be, Instagram, as well as our review channel. We're putting out three to seven more videos a week there. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.